For my tomato ricotta tart, I'm going to make the pastry because it needs to go into the refrigerator for about a half an hour. So in my food processor, I'm putting in three cups of flour, just regular all-purpose, and I'm going to add to that a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sugar. And I'm also going to add to that eight pieces of really crisp bacon that I've crumbled up, the bacon in the crust. It's not going to taste like bacon, it's going to taste like bacon, just a slight taste. Just mix that up a little bit. Okay, now to that, I have one and one half sticks of cold butter that I've cubed up, nice and cold. And a third of a cup of cold Crisco, or shortening of your choice. Um, I actually put this in the measuring cup and left it in my refrigerator overnight. Make sure it was nice and cold. Now, pulse that about eight times. Now we're going to add some water. I have some very cold water, ice water. And I'm going to start with six tablespoons. You might need as much as eight. Three. And six. Let's see where we go. Yep, take a little bit more. good to me. Yeah. I have a piece of plastic wrap. Put that on there. And I'm going to just gently ease it together. Make a nice disc. You can see all that bacon in there. And I can smell all the bacon. Okay, cover it up, shape it into a disc, it'll make it a lot easier to roll this way. And now I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes before we roll it out. And then we'll be back and put our pie together. Here's our dough out of the refrigerator, it's been in there for about 30 minutes. I'm going to roll it out. Now what I have here is I've got a tart pan with a removable bottom. This is a 12 inch pan. It's a large one. Most of you probably have an 8 or 10. And you can use that too. You'll just have to leave your tart in the oven a little bit longer because it'll be thicker. So let's get this going. Keep it turning. Make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. It has a tendency to want to crack a little bit. No problem. You can always patch it up in the pan. And it'll never show in the final product. Just about. And again, it's probably going to crack a little. Don't worry about it. And now into the pan. And then just lift it up and just press it in gently. And see how that broke along there? Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Okay. 
Yeah, we take some of this, do a little patchwork over here. And any other spots you might have. Got a little tear here. And a little bit more there. And there is your bacon crust. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for a while, get out all my ingredients for the filling, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to fill it up. Now I'm going to be making the filling for the ricotta pie, ricotta and tomato pie. So first what I want to do is I want to cut the tomatoes into slices and I'm putting them on a paper towel lined sheet so that I can get rid of a lot of the juices. I'm also going to salt and pepper them and that will also cause the tomato to exude some of their juices. So I'm going to finish those first. And I'm using plum tomatoes. Um, you can use any kind of tomatoes, but I'm using plum tomatoes because they're meatier, they're thicker, and they just, I like them. And if I'm buying tomatoes that are out of season, um, we're up here in New England, and tomatoes in December to me in the supermarket are just not tomatoes. I like garden fresh tomatoes. So the only other tomatoes that I will eat year round are plum tomatoes or maybe even the grape tomatoes. But the regular round tomatoes, not for me. <laughs> so get a few more of these done. And our filling is going to contain Parmesan cheese, ricotta cheese, and a little bit of and a lot of mozzarella, and some basil, and some salt and pepper, and some eggs. Almost like a quiche-like filling. I'm going to do one more and see if I have enough. I can always add more to it later. side and I'm going to take the tomatoes and salt them. Give them a little pepper. In the food processor I'm going to put one third cup of whole milk ricotta and I have some fresh basil leaves. Um, you want a couple of tablespoons of basil. I'm not measuring Again, it's not baking. And I'm going to just give that a little ride. So give it a little blend. Now to that, I'm going to add three whole eggs. Blend that up well. Scrub down there. And to this, I'm going to add a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese and eight ounces of mozzarella. And I'm going to blend that up well. Now, I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to go get my crust and we're going to fill it up. Here's our crust. And I'm going to make a layer on the bottom of our tomatoes. And now I'm going to take our filling. Put this over. almost like a quiche. Got a little offset spatula. 
spread it out. And then we're going to top it off with another layer of our tomatoes. Now if these were my summertime tomatoes from my garden, this would be a home run. But I will settle for these in hopes that in a couple of months I can make this again with my own. Now I've got a 350 degree oven going and I'm going to put that in the 350 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes until it's set and then we'll have some tomato pie. of ricotta cheese that fell onto my counter. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days. Probably <laughs> you're being like me. Oh, no, this is my third drop you already. To rolls. Pam, you've got to stop rubbing off. I'm, oh my God. Who's going to just give that a little ride? And now I guess I'm not. 